So in this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can specify global styling to your HTML element. So you don't have to repeat yourself to specify the same styling to the HTML element. So I'm going to just open my editor and right here in the explorer tab in this CSS folder, I'm going to create a new file and name that file global.css. If you want, you can add this styling in the style.css as well. But I'm using CSS as a modular way, I'm going to separate this global styling. So I'm going to just simply add this global.css file in the style.css file. I'm going to create here a multi-line command and just say global CSS file. And I'm going to add here import statement. And in the URL, I'm going to specify the path of this global.css file. Save all the changes back to the global.css. And I'm going to add here global styling to this template. So I'm going to first select the anchor tag and just remove the text decoration property. So I'm going to say text decoration none. So this class will remove all the borders from the anchor tags. Just out of that, I want to make all the images responsive. So I'm going to create a class for that. So I'm going to create here a class fluid and I'm going to specify width to it and the width is going to be 100%. And the height is going to be auto. So this class is useful to make the image responsive. Now just out of that, I want to create a class for the text. So I'm going to just simply create here a class text dark. And this class is useful to specify color dark to the text. So I'm going to just add here a color property with the var function and specify dark variable. Just out of that, I'm going to create here text light. And the color of this text light is going to be the light color. Then I'm going to create here text gray. And the color of this class is going to be gray. So I'm going to call here gray variable. Save all the changes. When you save it, you can notice you're not going to see your navigation items. Because now you have this global class to your navigation items. If you just take a look at your index file, then you can notice we have this link and this text light class to these navigation items. So using this global class, I'm going to specify text light color to this navigation item. So for now to see these navigation items, let me just specify color to the body element. So I'm going to say body background and to the background, I'm going to specify color dark. This will specify dark background color to the body section. So you can see your navigation items. Now just out of that, I'm going to just toggle this window on the right side and just open the global.css file. Just out of that, just out of this text gray class, I'm going to simply create text primary class to specify color primary. So I'm going to say here primary color. So this class is used to specify primary color to the element. Then I'm going to just create text center. So this class is used to align the text center. Just out of that, I'm going to create text SM class. Now this class is used to specify small text and specify different font family to the text. So I'm going to specify here font normal. The style of this font is normal. Then I'm going to specify font width 700. Then I'm going to specify font size 0.9 rem. And I'm going to specify font family to it. And the font family is going to be font rel. Just out of that, I'm going to create a text empty class. Now this class is used to specify medium size of text to the HTML element. And using this class, I'm going to specify small text to the HTML element. So in this class, I'm going to simply copy this font property and just paste it here. And I want to change this size. So I'm going to simply say here, 1.2 rem font size and the line height is going to be 1.4 rem. Just out of that, I'm going to create a text for the large font size. So I'm going to say text LG. So using this class, I'm going to specify large font size to the HTML element. So I'm going to just specify here a simple font property and I'm going to just change this font size to 2 rem. And the line height is going to be 
at rem. Just after that, I'm going to create here a class uppercase. Now this class is useful to transform the text to uppercase. So I'm going to say text transform uppercase. So this class is useful to transform any text to uppercase. Just after that, I'm going to simply create here flex class and specify display flex. Then I'm going to create flex row class. So I'm going to select flex and select flex row. So this class is only apply when you have flex class applied to the element. And to this class, I'm going to specify flex direction row. Then I'm going to select the flex again, create flex column class and specify flex direction is going to be column. For example, let's say you want to specify flex direction column to the HTML element, then you just need to use both these classes. Just start that, I'm going to simply select the flex class, then call flex wrap. And I'm going to say here flex wrap is going to be wrap. So this property will make your flex box responsive. Just start that, I'm going to select the flex again and create a simple class which is justify content center. So this class is useful to center the content of the flex element. So I'm going to just say here justify content center. Just after that, I'm going to simply create a class for the padding zero. So I'm going to say P zero and specify padding to it zero. And then at the last, I'm going to create a class for the paragraph. So I'm going to select a paragraph and create a class for it, para. And when I specify this para class to the paragraph, I want to specify font family to it. Font family is going to be normal. 200 is the width of this font. 1 RAM is the font size. And specify font family, which is font rail. Then I'm going to specify margin 0. And margin bottom is going to be 1 RAM. I want to specify color to the paragraph. So I'm going to say color, call the var function and specify the gray variable here. Now you can use all these global classes to save your lot of time. Now if you want, you can use these global classes in your other HTML project as well. That's upon you. Now using these global classes, we actually done 40% work of this template. Now. In the previous lecture, we understand how we can create this beautiful navigation menu. Along with that, we also understand how to create global classes to make styling more easier and save a lot of time. Now, in this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can create your own grid system using CSS. Just like the bootstrap. In the bootstrap, you have 12 column grid system. I'm going to show you how you can create your own grid system for your HTML template. So, let's get started and see how to create it. So, I'm going to first open my editor. I'm going to simply open the explorer tab and in the CSS folder right here inside this asset, I'm going to create a new file and name that file grid.css and I'm going to put all the grid columns inside this grid.css file. Now before I add any styling inside this grid.css file, let me first include this file in the style.css. So just start this global file, I'm going to just create here a multi-line command and just specify here grid css file and just start that i'm going to just include this file using import statement so i'm going to say import url and inside it i'm going to specify my asset folder the css folder and then select my grid.css file so now we can use any classes from this grid.css file now just back to your grid.css file and just toggle this window on the right side I want to first center this navigation menu. If we just take a look at the finished website, you can notice we have this navigation menu center. So I'm going to just simply create a container class and center this navigation menu. Now, if we just take a look at the index file, you can notice here we already have this container class to this navigation menu. So we don't need to specify that class again to the navigation menu. So I'm going to just create this container class in the grid system. So I'm going to open the grid file and right here, I'm going to simply create a container class. So I'm going to just create here container and inside it, I'm going to just specify the width, 
width is going to be 100 percent then i'm going to specify padding padding is going to be 15 pixel if you don't want to add any padding you can leave this property just out of that i'm going to specify margin left property and it's going to be auto and i'm going to specify margin right is going to be auto now if you just take a look at your navigation menu it's still on the left side so if you wanted to center this navigation menu i'm going to just specify here with 50 percent so when i save the changes you can notice the navigation menu is on the center of the document but i don't want to center this navigation menu using this 50 percent width instead i'm going to make this navigation menu responsive using media query so if you just specify 50% width to this navigation menu, that doesn't make this navigation menu responsive. So I'm going to simply create here a media query. So I'm going to add at the rate media and in the parenthesis, I'm going to call minimum width is going to be 576 pixel. If the viewport is minimum 576 pixel or greater than that, I want to change the styling of this container. So I'm going to simply say here container and inside it i'm going to specify max width to this container and i'm going to simply specify here 540 pixel so when i save the changes you can notice we have this styling to this navigation menu so when i save the changes so we have this styling to this navigation menu so now the navigation menu has 540 pixel width now i'm going to just create this media query again so i'm going to copy this media query paste it down here and at this time i'm not gonna select the 576 pixel instead i'm gonna just get rid of this 576 pixel viewport and just select 768 pixel so if the viewport is equal to 768 pixel or greater than that i want to change the width of this container and i'm gonna just specify here 720 so now if i save the changes this will change the width of this container now just out of that I'm going to just copy this media query, paste it down here and I'm going to just change this max width and this is going to be 992 pixel. So now if the viewport is greater than or equal to 992 pixel, I'm going to just apply max width is going to be 960 pixel. If the viewport is equal to 992 pixel or greater than that, I want to apply this max width property to the container so when i save the changes you can notice we have this 960 pixel width to this container now just after that i'm going to copy this media query paste it down here and this is going to be the last media query for this container and this time i'm going to just change this media query viewport and i'm going to say here 1200 and i'm going to just change this max width the max width is going to be 1140 so i'm going to just specify this max width if the viewport is equal to 1200 or greater than that save all the changes if i just change viewport you're going to get the different result to this navigation menu so let me just show you so i'm going to first specify here a background color to this container to see the result clearly so i'm going to simply say here bg background color and i'm going to just say here light blue Save the changes. You're gonna have this light blue color to this navigation menu. Now let me just open the inspect tool. So I'm gonna just press Control Shift I to open the inspect tool, or you can just right click here and say inspect. I'm gonna just open the mobile viewport. So I'm gonna simply click on this toggle device toolbar. When I click on it, this will change the viewport. So I'm gonna first open the desktop viewport, which is 1920. So when I change the viewport size, if I decrease it, you can notice the container will get different width. You can notice here when the viewport is less than 1200, you can notice we have different width to this container. So as you can see, the width of this container is now changed. So the viewport is now 1194. So if I just increase this viewport and when I have the viewport greater than 1200, I'm going to have different width to this container, right? Now let me just decrease the size of this container. Now as you can see we have different width to this container depending on the viewport. And now what I want 
I want to show you how you can create your own grid system using just a CSS. So let me just show you how you can create your own grid system. But before I create any grid system, let me just move this search box on the right side like this. Now in the finished website, you can notice we have this search box on the right side of the navigation menu. To move this search box on the right side, you can notice we have a class to this navigation menu, which is margin right auto. So I'm going to create this class in the global.css file. So I'm going to open the global.css file and right here, I'm going to create that class and I'm going to just say here margin right auto. And I'm going to simply specify here margin right auto. When I save the changes, you can notice we have this search box on the right side of this navigation menu. As simple as that. Now, just after that, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to copy this class, paste it down here and change this class name to margin left. And this became margin left. Now, if you want to move the element on the left side, you can use this class. Just after that, back to your grid system. Now, if you just take a look at your navigation menu, it has this max width 1140 pixel. Now, what if you want to specify 100% width to the HTML element? In that case, I'm going to create a new class. So, I'm going to copy this container, paste it down here and just change this class to container fluid. If you're ever familiar with Bootstrap, then we have this class in the Bootstrap as well. Now in Bootstrap, we use this class to create full width container. And we're going to do the same in this template as well. I'm going to save all the changes. And let me just show you how you can create your own grid system, which you can use anywhere in any HTML website. So I'm going to just simply create here grid columns. So I'm going to just simply add here a command and just say grid system. 